All right, today we're gonna talk about the brand new DJI Focus Pro. This is their first wireless fall focusing system that is competing against some of the cinema standards such as the one from Tilta, from Teradek. But one thing that really sets this thing apart from the competition is its compatibility with the LiDAR. Now with the LiDAR and all of this setup, it becomes a full autofocus system and just packed with lots of new cool features with some AI technology. This video is gonna be a little bit more technical. We're gonna talk about all the new features, put it through some tests, and later on we're gonna compare this against the Tilda Nucleus M and maybe even compare it to apples to apples, compare the LiDAR to other DJI LiDAR systems. So let's get into it. So those who know, DJI has been working on LiDAR autofocus for a very long time. They started off with a 3D focus on RS2, which was just straight middle point autofocus system for the gimbal. And then they released the Ronin 4D with the LiDAR. And then they brought that same technology down to RS3's LiDAR, which was just great. Now, one thing that all of those had in common was that they only worked with the gimbal. Even though recently DJI allowed you to use the RS3's LiDAR just standalone by itself, you still needed to buy other accessories in order to make it work. You needed to have the DJI transmitter, you know, connected, you need to get that special adapter cable that allowed you to connect all the gimbal motor everything to it. You had to use the DJI RS3's motor, which was kind of small, there was only one motor, and that thing took only 12mm rod, and you had to purchase a kind of like an adapter for 15mm and so forth. But now with the Focus Pro, DJI basically made this as its own standalone product. They can also work with something like an RS4, RS3, or other gimbals, but with it being its own separate unit and doesn't necessarily rely on gimbals anymore. So now when you purchase the Focus Pro, you have two options to choose from, Creator Combo and All-in-One Combo. Now when you get the Creator Combo, you get the new LiDAR, you get the new Focus Pro Grip, you get the new Focus Motor, which is a Fizz Motor, and then you also get the Carry Case. Now if you decide to purchase the All-in-One Combo, then you get all of the stuff that I mentioned with the addition of the brand new Focus Pro hand grip unit that allows you to control up to three motors and much more. So we are over here right now with Luis. Um, we're testing out the Focus Pro. The setup that we have right here is the Ronin 4D flex system with the Tilta cage and we're running Lawa 2875 Ranger zoom lens. And so we have the Focus Pro three motors right here. And then we have the new handle and then obviously the lighter right here. The lighter doesn't necessarily matter where you put it, as long as you put it. So now we're gonna do some autofocus tests just to see how it performs. When you use this handle right here, you have a three channel control, meaning you have your zoom, you have iris control right here, and obviously the focus. So we're gonna put this on an autofocus mode and we're gonna do some testing. Luis seems like, seems like he's in focus. Yeah, you're completely in focus. You gotta cover my face? Yeah. So this has the whole smart AI algorithm which will help identifying people, humans' faces, machinery, whatever. As you can see, it sees where Luis is and using the LiDAR and it just works all together like that. Now we're gonna get into the more technical part about this whole video and that is getting to know all of these products, how they work, what they do. We're gonna start off with the LiDAR. This is their brand new version two LiDAR. It shares the same design as I would say the version one was, but obviously some minor outside changes are the new ring around the camera unit right here. And in the back, this now has information for you to know which mode you're on. Now the main changes regarding the LiDAR is that this now has a 76,800 ranging points. It basically shoots a bunch of lasers down in the area and the surface and it can identify the subject a lot better. It uses their brand new AI human machine algorithm which can just help identifying the subject a lot better. This now can do up to 65 feet of focusing range so if your object is in a bit of a far distance this will have a lot better chances of tracking the subject and just keeping it in focus the whole time. We can now store up to 15 lens memories in the LiDAR that's good for having multiple lenses. You don't want to calibrate every single time that you have a new lens. All of them will be stored right in here, up to 15, of course. If you have more, then you probably have to sacrifice most of them. But probably the best feature about this lighter is that this now supports AMF. Now, if you don't know what AMF is, it's basically an auto manual focus that allows you to take control on your autofocus situation. The dial does spin whenever you have it on and you can always take control whenever you need it. And lastly, this now has an improved low light performance, which is just great for filming at night. 
Now, one thing for you to know is that if you have something that's blocking in front of your lens, it can be a map box, or even if you just have a longer lens, make sure to keep in mind to either put the lighter a little bit more forward where the lens is not really blocking, or your other option is to just press the 2x zoom on the screen and it will kind of help you out with that. Now the hand grip, this is a brand new product from DJI. This shares a very similar design to something we've seen on the gimbals. It has the same 1.8 inch touchscreen display, of course missing the joystick, but it does have some few buttons up front. Uh, it does have the same interchangeable battery style, so you just take it out like this and you can swap it or charge it. You can purchase separate batteries if you want to, but this one should run you for a few hours and then if it's out of battery, then you can just charge it up and use it again. This does have two USB-C ports, which allows you to power the focus motor and the LiDAR simultaneously. And it also has a few mounting options, such as a quarter 20, cold shoe, and an air rail on the side. Now, this handle is being used to control everything. You can do lens calibration, you can add a new lens, you can change the settings between AF and AMF mode or MF mode. You can either do a spot flex focusing or you can do a wide focus and you can just adjust them all from here. You can use this dial in the front of the handle to control either the focus or the zoom. Unfortunately, you can't do them both simultaneously or with the switch of a button. You have to go through the menu and change the settings. I hope that's something that DJI will maybe bring in as a firmware update. It does connect using the DJI Roland app, so that's kind of nice. And then, but yeah, I just wish you could just press the trigger and you can adjust the focus or the zoom, whatever you have it set up using that. The trigger allows you to do face tracking, that's kind of nice. And that's basically all that is for the handle grip. Now, when it comes to the focus motor, this is their brand new fist control motor. This has some smart technology inside that knows which mode to be in. You can just change between focus, iris, or zoom. That's basically what fizz is, to set it up in order to its functionality. And lastly, let's talk about this brand new hand grip unit. Now you've probably seen this before, it was announced with the Ronin 4D. It had a similar design, but this is an updated version. This now has a nice touchscreen display. It allows you to control up to three motors. You have your focus, your iris, and your zoom. This allows you to put basically A and B points. The M button allows you to switch between AF, MF, or AMF modes. And then the record button is, of course, to connect it to the camera. This does have a 500 feet of range. So if you're just using this as is, then if your first AC is 500 feet away, then you're not going to have any latency issues. doesn't matter if there's any building blocking or anything. This will function just fine. But one really important thing is that if you do have the DJI transmitter unit and you have the Hybride monitor, you can purchase an optional adapter that allows you to connect this to the Hybride monitor. When you have the transmitter on with the LiDAR and everything and this Hybride monitor display, you get this small screen right here where it shows what your LiDAR sees. So as you can see, if I'm moving around, you can see it kind of highlights cam on it. And so this, this is basically just one way of you seeing what the LiDAR can see. Right here, cam has the Focus Pro's three channel controller setup, which allows him to do zoom, iris, focus. And he has this whole setup connected to another hybrid monitor. And it just works seamless with this whole kind of setup. That's the one thing about the ecosystem that just works out great. Am I right, Cam? Oh, here goes the Cowboys. What? This guy. The Cowboys are coming. Well, we have the Cowboys coming right now. We're about to get some driving shots. Cam, are you excited? What? Are excited? <laughs> okay, so now we're here at the studio with Luis and we're gonna do a comparison between the Tilta Nucleus M and the brand new Focus Pro. Now, the Tilta Nucleus M has been out for many years and it's the number one choice when it comes to wireless follow focusing system for all sorts of productions. Now, with the Focus Pro, not only DJI is bringing a really good wireless follow focusing system, but they're also including their new LiDAR autofocus technology and introducing it to the market. So now comparing both motors next to each other, you can clearly see that the DJI's motor is a lot more smaller, a lot more lighter, and it doesn't necessarily require a lot of the technology that you have with the Nokia SM when it comes to setting it up and everything. This all you have to do is just connect it to the power, connect it to the motor, and with a click of a button, you can set it to be either a focus, iris, or zoom versus this one you have to set it to a different channel 
and just it's a lot more complicated when it comes to that. Now, when it comes to the power, Focus Pro takes a USB-C for power and you can just connect other USB-Cs to power them together versus the Nucleus M, it does take a locking pin limo, which is a lot more secure, but again, the USB-Cs are a lot more easier to replace. So it's not really much of a big change. Okay, so right now we have the setup. We're gonna test the range between the Focus Pro and the Tilt the Nucleus M. Luis right here is gonna be in charge of it. He's gonna let me know whether it's rolling or not. I have both handles right here, as you can see. So we're gonna go out right now and just check how good it is. Now I'm gonna stop right here, doing the DJI. DJI, yeah, D fast. DJI is working. And then the Nucleus. Also responsive. So Nucleus works as well. So, okay, so we are, we're like far away from them. Now let's go behind this building. Okay. So the handicap sign? Yeah, so now we're we're behind the building. I'm doing the uh, DGI. Yep, responsive. The Tilta. Nothing. So Tilta yeah. already lost the connection yeah, at connection. this point. I wanna see how close I can get before. Is it working? Are you doing it how I'm saying it? Yeah. It's skipping like really, it's going up and down like er er erratically. Okay, so about this and range. The DJI, do the same thing with the DJI, slow and down, slow and down, way, way slower. I'm talking about like super slow. Like if yeah, so it's more responsive. So at this point, Tilta loses the connection. Do you have any connection right now on Tilta? Yeah, I do, but it's skipping really hard. Okay. What about right now? So Tilta basically stops working at this point and then, but DJI still has connections. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go a little bit more further away just to see how good this thing can handle. I'm gonna go across the street just for the final test. Let's do it. DJI. Yep. It's, it's working? Just to show you guys like where he's all the way behind that building now let's go a little bit more more away okay so i'm gonna come to this alleyway right now and then i feel like it's gonna lose connection right right here so again dgi it's still working i want to see just where it's gonna lose the range is it working now no there's nothing now okay so Luis is all the way behind this building right now, like far away. So DJI works on all the way until right, like right here. Out which, of sight. And it's like, there's like a lot of buildings, a lot of wires and stuff, and it's still working. Now the Tilta one stopped working right around here in this parking lot. So that tells you that like from here, all the way over there, you have I don't know how much, how long of a range this is, but it does look pretty far. Now we also wanted to do some sort of a delay test with both systems. We filmed this in 240 frames per second just so we could see it in slow-mo. And you can clearly see how fast the Focus Pro is compared to the Tilta Nucleus M. We tried this test many times and just overall the performance on the Focus Pro is a lot better than what it is on the Tilta Nucleus M. Now comparing the LiDAR on the Focus Pro versus its older brother Ronin 4D's LiDAR, you can clearly see how much of an improvement the whole new AI technology brings. It detects the faces a lot better and whenever you hold an object in front of the face, the Ronin 4D just focuses on whatever is closer. It, even though it has the smart features, it's not as advanced as something that is on the Focus Pro. Now if you look at something like the Teradek RT or the Focus Bug, those are not only super expensive, I think you gotta spend like $12,000 to have that whole setup, but it also does not have that same ecosystem functionality as it is on the Focus Pro. Not only the Focus Pro is a lot more cheaper, but it also works with the other accessories that DJI offers, like other cameras. Well, that concludes my review on the Focus Pro. Um, this thing is very solid, it's very good. I've been testing it out for a few weeks. We even shot some cowboy stuff, so if you want to check that out, the link will be down in the description. It's on Cam's channel, but just the overall build and quality of it is very solid. It can work. Doesn't matter if you just have a small camera set up like this, or you're running a Komodo with full cine lens, zoom lens. This is gonna do the job just as good. And 
of course DJI will keep improving it and adding more features we'll see but yeah this was the review on the focus pro if you like it please leave a like and subscribe i have a lot more cool content coming soon and if you want to check out the review that i did on the rs4 pro the link will be down in the description also thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next one